Hi and welcome back to another episode of C. Marcus Luce playing his favorite board games. I heard you and because Halloween is approaching I really decided to play one of the most thematic board games out there and that's clearly a touch of evil and I really hope you'll like it. So thanks for all your comments out there on BGG, on YouTube, on Facebook, you name it, really appreciate the input and really I like the idea of playing a good old round of touch of evil here. As you can see I decided to do my first run through and this is really the first time I'm playing this on camera only with a base game, at least with a base board. I have more or less all the location cards from Something Wicked and the Coast expansions in there. I will only play with six town elders so I'm not introducing using the three more that come with the coast, I believe. But you will also see characters from all the expansions. I think Frederick Leon here, here's from the Hero Pack 2. And Brother Marcus is actually from something wicked. And this was really a coincidence. I was really sh rolling a lot of dice in order to figure out my starting character or my characters here. And yeah, Brother Marcus turned up. Isn't that nice? But I decided to play it with three players. And the third one is Katarina the Outlaw. And I believe she's from the base game. Let's have a look at the start starting abilities of all of our heroes. Let's do that in the reverse order. So she is deadly. She hits on four, five, on six instead of the normal five or six. She can take a hell of a lot of wounds, which is not too bad. Brother Marcus, he's faithful. He will not use guns, but he can use spirit instead of combat in a fight. And there are really some cool items out there and you can definitely raise your spirit by training. He starts at the crossroads. He was on a mission just returning back to Shadowbrook. And last but not least, we have the Strength of Spirit may pay two investigation to cancel any mystery card or event on the D6 roll of four plus limit once per turn. And that's really not bad because it goes hand in hand with the special ability of Sophie the Midwife may cancel any mystery card in play or event as it is played on the D6 roll of three plus each. So you can do that a little bit better than Marcus could do that. Yeah, and then we have Frederick Leon, the foreign diplomat. Uh, he has always an escort while in a town space may pay it to investigation as an action to take a militia marker and this militia marker travels with him and can only be used by him. There may also be up to one militia in the space as normal so he can definitely go into a space with another militia. Then there is the Intrigue, may pay two investigation at any time to draw an event card. That's really great. And last but not least, we have Diplomacy, when paying to look at the Town Elder Secrets never needs to reveal them. This can really be helpful, but let's see how this plays out. As I've never played this game on camera before, I decided to go with a somewhat more straightforward and maybe also easier villain here, and that's the Spectral Horseman. I think it also fits very nicely into to this whole Halloween season right now. I've played the game quite a lot, but to be honest, the last time I played it's already at least one and a half years back. So expect me to do some rules mistake and I will definitely forget one or two things, but I know you are with me to make me aware of all my mistakes. So let's see at the special abilities here. That's a relentless charge. So he will pretty much ride to the town hall and whoever is in his path will get attacked. Then we also play with the advanced abilities. That's for sure. He will collect souls every time the spectral horseman kills a town ill he gains a plus two wounds marker and by the way as we are playing cooperatively he has three times that wounds count here so 18 wounds in total then the spectre the spectral horseman gains plus one combat against any hero with less than four spirit i think right now only brother marcus is safe and we have the endless ride at any time the mystery card murder is played. The spectral horseman appears at the same random location and pretty much does the relentless charge again. But I think I will explain all those little rules as we go. Of course, I will also play with the advanced side of the minion chart for the spectral horseman. And on top of that, I will use the advanced cooperative mystery face chart. And this is the nice one that shifts with the coast expansion. The first round will be started by Frederick Leon, the foreign diplomat. So let's roll for his movement. And that's the one. Okay, so we are allowed to draw our first event card. And I guess that's a pretty lame one. Play immediately, play this card on any hero that hero may now carry. One additional card from either the manor or the windmill remains in play. And I think I will just leave it with 
Frederick himself. He only rolled a 1 for movement and if, if you may remember this is pretty similar to fortune and glory. You can still move but on the roll of a 1 you are allowed to gain one event card. And I think in this game all of the event cards should be good. And by the way that's Frederick Leon and that's Katerina the Outlaw. Looks pretty nice. And he's pretty good or he's doing pretty good in respect to cunning but as you need cunning in order to collect investigation tokens or spirit I think he wants to train cunning. So he will move into the magistrate's office. He will draw an event here and yeah I think that's more like it. If I could just reach. Play to immediately take any item out of the discard pile. Right now there isn't a discard pile but this can really turn out to be pretty useful later on. I will use the team rules that come with something wicked so I will pretty much hold all the cards together for all of the heroes. And now he gets to train cunning. So he will now pay two investigation. All of the heroes start with two investigation. And in case you may not know, investigation is more or less a currency in this game. Now he would be allowed to do an honor five plus test. He has an honor of three, so he's allowed to roll three dice. And if one of those dice shows a five or a six, he would gain plus one cunning. And wow, okay, <laughs> that was close, very close, but good enough. So. He just got an additional cunning. Nice. There is nothing else to do for Frederick Leon, so we move over to Brother Mark here. So let's roll for his move. And also a one. Okay, okay. I think that's not bad actually at the start of the game. So let's see what event card he gets. And that's a good one. Militia, play immediately. Place a militia marker at any named space on the board. Limit one militia mark per space. Stand fast, man. Watch for anything unnatural. Okay, I think I will place the militia marker right into the old woods because this is where brother Marcus is moving to and they pretty much help you <laughs> survive dangerous situations. So that's definitely not a bad start. And as I mentioned with my one movement point, I will then move into the old woods and yeah, draw my first encounter card there. Okay, let's see what we found here. Oh, Timberwolves. Good that I have Militia with me. They have rolling two fight dice. They have can take two wounds and Timberwolves gain plus two fight dice for each ally you have. Right now I don't have any allies, so that's pretty much okay. I think let's fight those guys. Brother Marcus is allowed to use Spirit instead of combat in a fight round. And now I think I was not thinking straight because of course I cannot add the plus one from the Militia to that roll to be honest. So, But still I would roll four dice whereas here I would only roll two dice but they can take a wound that's still good enough. So yeah I think let's fight those guys with spirit. So those wolves are rolling two dice that's the yellow dice and yellow will always be the dice for any villains or minions or whatnot. I will roll four white dice and I hit on a five or six so all of us hit on a five or six. That's not bad at all. Great. We were able to take those guys right away and therefore I gain two more investigation. Nice. And last but not least it's Katarina the Outlaws. So let's roll for her movement. That's too close, very close. And I think she also will try to increase her cunning. So she will move into the magistrate's office. She's allowed to take one event card and here she found recovery. Play at any time except during a fight to immediately heal d6 wounds from a hero or d3 wounds from the villain. Okay, you can also use it in the competitive mode of this game or play to immediately take any ally out of the discard pile. Wow, awesome. Okie dokie. Then she will also pay her two investigation to train cunning. Good thing is she has an honor of five. So she's allowed to roll five dice and she's looking for five plus. Yes, not a problem for her. So she just increased her cunning up to four. Okay, that was already the action phase for the heroes. Now we come into the mystery phase. First thing to do would be to roll on the advanced corporate mystery phase chart. So let's roll two dice. That's a six. And here we have the March of Darkness. Every minion on the board immediately moves two spaces. No, they don't have any minions yet. If there are no minions on the board, instead roll once on the villain's minion chart and place that minion at two random locations. So let's do that real quick. As we will re-roll all events, it can be pretty much only a Bargast Hound or a Ghost Soldier. So let's see what we get. That's a Ghost Soldier. So we will spawn two of those guys. 
at two random locations on the board and also pretty similar to fortune and glory you would draw a layer card in this case so the first guy would go to the manor up there and the second ghost soldier goes to the abandoned keep down there let's have a quick look at the ghost soldiers and yeah they roll three fight dice they can take three wounds would gain five investigation which is not bad and we have some let's say special abilities heroes must use their spirit instead of combat during this fight that's not too bad for brother marcus actually if the hero does no hits to the ghost soldiers during a fight round roll at six on the roll of one or two, the hero must immediately escape from the fight if possible, as they are driven off by the ghastly horde. Okay, I think this is really a job for Brother Marcus, it seems, but that's pretty much the role on the advanced cooperative mystery face charm. That's really a mouthful. And last but not least, we would draw our mystery card. So let's see what we get. The Devil's Mark. This card plays on the hero that drew in this case. That's the starting player or the first player. That's Frederick Lyon this round. So he now gets minus one combat remains in play. Wow, that's really a bad start. But I think we will now try to use Strength of Spirit by Brother Marcus. May pay two investigation to cancel any mystery card or event on the roll of four plus limit once per turn. Okay, let's do that. So we will pay two investigation and we'll try to cancel that event. We are looking for a four plus. So we have a 50-50 chance but overall awesome okay perfect that was definitely worth the investigation so this card is gone perfect and the really last thing to do in this turn is to pass the starting or first player marker to brother marcus or the next player in line and this is a rule which i find pretty cumbersome and very unnecessary because you now the first player now has to wait an additional round until yeah he gets to do actions again but okay that's like it is and so we will start with brother marcus again so again we would roll for movement so let's see that's a six so he is definitely way more mobile this turn and i really think i want to move to the abandoned keep in order to banish those ghost soldiers there so let's do that one two three and four before i move into my action phase i have to fight those guys so keep in mind they roll three dice i roll four dice because i have to fight them with spirit but this is pretty good for brother marcus so let's see how well we are doing here okay that was a complete useless turn if i'm not mistaken <laughs> no that's really no one does a hit so i think Oh no, I think now, ah, I didn't do any hit. Oh man, I think, ah no, okay, I still can make it. I can still roll a die and if I don't roll a one or two, I don't have to escape. So let's hope for the best here. Good, so we can continue to fight. And much like Fortune and Glory, we are rolling a hell of a lot of dice. So let's roll those guys again. Oh, that was nice. I inflicted two wounds on those ghost soldiers, perfect one and two they don't do anything perfect and i can press on in this case which i totally will do of course so let's see yeah perfect and i don't take a single hit oh, wow isn't he great so i was able to defeat those ghost soldiers and therefore i gain five more investigation brilliant now i can do my action phase and i think i will do that by drawing a card from the abandoned keep collapse the spiral chairs crumble beneath you and you plummet to the floor below roll three dice for every roll of one or two take one wound and lose one ally item or investigation then encounter the abandoned keep again okay so let's see we are not looking for any one or twos if i'm not mistaken and of course that's two so i now take two wounds here and i have to lose two investigation that's all i have right now and then i have to encounter it again and <laughs> okay i fell into a den of thieves it seems honor among thieves stumbling into a den of thieves and rogues you quickly realize that you are surrounded make an honor five plus test and gain plus two investigation for every five six up oh, five plus roll if failed, discard one item of your choice, then your turn ends and you are immediately moved to the town hall. Okay, Brother Marcus has an honor of three. Yeah, let's see. 
Okay, that's one success, so we have not failed it. That's great. Well, we gained two investigation. And as we haven't failed it, I'm not moved to the town hall, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, then it's Katarina the outlaw. Let's roll for a movement. Again, we see a one, so we are allowed to draw another event card. Oh, and that's another good one. Endurance. Play immediately. Play this card on any hero. He gains an additional wound. And right now I think Frederic Leon is our weakest hero with only three wound slots. But on the other hand, Katarina should be our tank, don't you think? No, I think I will assign it to her right away. Okay, she can still roll one space. And who? Not sure where to get them. Maybe I will go to the town hall to draw two events, but then I would have to roll. Ah, that's tough. Two events and choose one. No, I think that's the better deal. So let's move into the town hall and draw two cards. And here we have Entourage, so that hero can carry up to two additional ally cards. Can be nice, but right now, I don't know. Gossip and rumors. This allows us to peek at the secrets of one town elder without revealing them. You may choose one of those secrets to discard and draw a new one without looking to replace it. Yeah, that's nice. So I will definitely discard the entourage and keep gossip and rumors. And I think I will play it right away. But I think first of all, I have to roll to find out if there is a mystery card waiting for us. Don't look looking for it. One or a two. Oh man, this was a four. Yeah, um, yeah, there is nothing I can do. I have to draw an additional mystery card now. And here we have a blocked road. Okay, that's from the coast expansion. Draw a random location and place block road marker. Yeah, of course we cannot move in there. And we would move the shadow drag one step closer to darkness. Not sure if I like that to be honest. So I think once more. Brother Marcus will use his strength of spirit, so he will pay two investigation in order to get rid of that block road. Of course, we still have to roll a four plus. No, this time it's not good enough. So we will see a blocked road and I will place a marker here in order to show that we have used this round already. Okay, let's see where this blocked road goes. The manor. Okay, we have to place now a face down militia marker on a road adjacent. So I think in this case, that's pretty easy peasy. We will place the blocked road marker there. But of course, we still have to move the darkness track one step ahead. So right now we are still doing kind of okay, I guess. Okay, and then it's Frederic Leon. Let's roll for his movement. That's a two. Huh, and right now he's out of any investigation. I really want those guys to train in spirit too because of our minions with the ghost soldiers, so it doesn't really hurt. But I think it's also a good idea to go to the covered bridge. Of course, this could also cause us to draw an additional mystery card, but I think that's still, yeah, let's go there. One to spaces. Before I engage the space, our diplomat will use the gossip and, gossip and rumors event card. And I think he will look at the secret of Lord Hanbrook, who would gain plus one fight dice in showdown. Lord Hanbrook must be wounded twice to be killed. That's really not a bad thing. So we really want to make sure that he has, let's say, a good secret or maybe only a little secret. And we can still replace it. That's actually pretty good. Full of lies, without shame or remorse, this town elder spins tales of the explodes and sows seeds of deceit amongst their rivals. No deed is too small to steal credit for, no amount of praise is ever enough. This is of no consequence to the investigation, no effect. Awesome. I take it and keep it. And then it's time to roll a die again. On a 3+, plus, we would be allowed to draw an event. Oof. <laughs> was close, but yeah, I will take it. And here we have the Magistrate's Mandate. Play immediately, play this card on any hero. That hero may not have one additional card from either the Old Woods or the Abandoned Keep. Oof, that's kind of lame, to be honest. So pff, I really don't know. Let's roll a die. One on two is Frederick, two or th three or four is Brother Marcus, and yeah, he will keep it. And it fits pretty nicely to the party invitation he already holds. Okay, and I think this was already the end of the round. Yeah, that's the case. 
Again, we would roll for the advanced, yeah. Mystery face chart, that's a 10. That's a mean one. Ambush in the night. Every hero must roll a d6 and add their cunning. Whoever has the lowest result is immediately attacked by one of the villain's minions. Of course, we would roll it off and place that minion in the hero space. During the first fight round, the hero may not use any items, allies, or ability, and the minions has double their normal fight dice. Are you kidding me? I will do this roll off pretty much off camera now. And unfortunately, it was Brother Marcus who is already hurt and he cannot use his, um, what is it? Strength of spirit ability here. Yeah, he only has a cunning of one in the end, so he doesn't have a chance against those other guys. Yeah, so let's see who he needs to face. And again, it's either the Marcus Hound or a Ghost Soldier, again we have, he has to fight Ghost Soldiers, which is kind of okay for him because he is pretty good, or doing pretty good in respect to Spear, but those guys would now roll six dice during the first fight round. So it seems he did not really do a good job in respect to do this exorcism here, the abandoned keep. But keep in mind, he still will roll his spirit because the ghost soldiers are calling for spirit results. Overall, that was not really bad for him at all. So let's see if I can find six yellow dice and four white dice. Well, wow. a ton of dice I'm rolling here. So let's see what we got. And I think overall this wasn't too bad to be honest. So he's inflicting two wounds. They only do one wound and I think there is nothing that he can do right now. No, unfortunately he has to take his third wound and he inflicted two wounds on the ghost soldiers. But I think he will still escape because yeah, I don't want him to lose his investigation. There's a good chance that yeah, they would take him out as well and then he would lose anything he would gain to be honest or no. Let's have him escape and I think he will go back to the doctor's office or so because he really needs to rest. Or maybe he will buy some stuff with the investigation he currently holds. Okay, then we have to draw our next mystery card. <laughs> and guess what? Another deadly encounter. Every hero must immediately roll a d6. Whoever rolls lowest must resolve a single fight round with a villain instead of causing wounds. Each hit done to the villain gains one investigation course. This does not count as a showdown. And I think whenever you fight the spectral horseman, he will do his relentless charge with an unquenchable thirst for revenge. The spectral horseman rides through the colonies is eternal. And yeah, so let's see who we will attack. And again, it's Brother Marcus who rolled one. <laughs> Can you believe that? Yeah, he will fight him. So let's place the spectral horseman here and he will then move towards the town hall and look who's waiting for him there. So she has to fight him too on his path to the town hall. Okay, overall he's rolling five combat dice. Good thing is he has a spirit of four so he doesn't gain any um, bonus here, the spectre bonus. But still, that's a hell of a lot of dice. And I think it's pretty clear that he may go down now. Yeah, wow, that's definitely a quite impressive blow, but the good thing is he also inflicted three wounds, so therefore he is allowed to gain three investigation, but of course he is KO'd too, so he will be sent right to the town hall. Now we would see how many investigation he would lose. Currently he holds eight, that's not too bad. Oh, that's four, okay. So yeah, he gives away his five, gets one back. So overall, he's down to four. And we are not done yet because the Spectral Horseman will do his relentless charge and will move to the town hall and of course will then engage Katarina the Outlaw too. Problem is she only rolls two combat dice and the Spectral Horseman gains one more because her spirit is below four. Yep, so he's rolling six dice. She's rolling her two. Good thing is she has her endurance card here. Oh, that was good. Wow, this was a roll I was hoping for for Brother Marcus. So yeah, definitely she inflicted one wound. So instead of wound, he gains one investigation. Then we would remove the Spectral Horseman off the board again. Okie dokie. And I think that was more or less it. The problem now is 
Brother Marcus will stay KO'd because you only stand up at the very start of the mystery phase and he pretty much was KO'd during the mystery card phase. So in this case he will miss out the next round which is really a pity. But of course he would still be allowed to gain or lose all those wound tokens and I think we can get rid of this token here too. Let's move the first player market to Katarina Outlaw. Katarina the Outlaw who will go first during the next round. So overall a pretty interesting first episode I think. I was really hoping for some more cooler items and somewhat cooler event cuts but overall yeah slowly but steadily we are getting along. We still need a hell of a lot of more investigation in order to buy stuff in order to equip our folks but I think we will get there sooner or later. Hope you are enjoying my little playthrough of A Touch of Evil here. Hope to see you soon in one of my next videos and yeah until then bye bye. <laughs>